In this video, we're going to take a look at the section tools available to us. So first of all, I want to create some section views that run through my house. And to do so, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can go to the View tab, since we're creating a new view. And here is my section tool. You'll also see the same section tool up top on your Quick Access toolbar. So I'll begin by clicking either one of those buttons. And then I'm going to click two points to create basically a line going across my house. So I'll click my first point and I can start to see my section indicator. Notice that it's pointing up in this case. And then I'll go across the house and click a second point. So this creates a section view cutting right through my house. It's really not that different from creating an elevation view, uh, but you just place it a little differently and of course it gives us a different symbol. If I want to move the section, if I want to bring it back, I can just click and drag on it. You can also see there's a far clip plane as well, just like there was on elevations. If I take a look at my categories, I now have a new building section category here. And here is section one. Now they can be renamed. I can right click and choose rename and for example, rename this one longitudinal section. And then I'll double click on the view to jump to it. So as you can see, I've got my section view. I'm cutting right through the house now. One of the reasons why you might do a section view is because it allows us to see inside the house and see problems such as this. If you look at this ceiling, once you have the ceiling and the light fixtures, they're actually interfering with the floor structure. So this ceiling needs to move down a little bit. So I'm going to adjust it slightly. It looks like seven foot's not enough. Maybe I'll go six foot eight. And now I've got the lights down below where they're not interfering with the floor structure. Another view type that we have available to us is a call out. So let's say that I wanted to get a closer look at what's going on with this garage wall over here. So I'll start by creating a call out of this area. And I'll use the call out tool and just simply pick two diagonal endpoints to call out a certain spot here. So now if I look at my sections category, I've got a longitudinal section call out one. So I'll double click on it to take me to the section view. One of the things that we're going to find at this point is that the foundation walls around the garage are a little different than the foundation walls around the rest of the house. We actually want these foundation walls to go up to the first floor level instead of the foundation level. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the two that are visible to me. I also need to go back and pick the third one that I can't see right now. But I'm just going to go over to the properties and change their top constraint to up to level first floor. So now if I look closely at this, I can see this spot here where the concrete floor and the concrete wall are intersecting with each other. And I want to join those together. So I'm going to go to my modify tab. And here in the geometry section is my join geometry tool. So I'll choose this button. And I'll just simply click on the foundation wall and the slab in the garage to join those together. And now you can see I've got one continuous little area of concrete here. I'm going to return to my floor plan to create another section view. This time I'm going to go the other way across the house. So I'll start with my section tool. And again, I'll just pick uh, one direction or another. So I'll pick two points to go across this house. I do want to point out that if I would have picked from top to bottom, the arrow would have pointed to the right. There is a flip arrow here that I can click on, so you can change the direction of your section pretty easily here. So let me take a look at my new section view here. And I haven't changed the name, but it's just called section one right now. And what I really want to focus on is the wall section. So I'm going to make another call out this time of the right side of the building here. So I'll pick two diagonal points across the right side. And now I've got my new call out here. So let's talk about the wall section and what this should actually look like. As you can see in 3D, I'm able to see the floor around the outside of my house. Um, now, earlier I changed these two garage walls and had them go up to the first floor. I haven't changed this one yet, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that right now, make that go up to the first 
floor, so that cleans up this area. Now on these other ones, what I want to do is I actually want to bring not the entire wall, but just the siding and the plywood down to the foundation level. If it was brick, I'd be bringing the brick down and the brick would be able to sit on the ledge here. So back in the section view, before I address the issue with the wall, I want to take a look at the spacing between the floor structure and the foundation wall. In between these two items is going to be a 2x6 sill plate and I don't have enough room for that right now so um, I'm going to bring my foundation level down another inch and a half to make room for that 2x6. So instead of negative 1 foot 3 inches it's going to be negative 1 foot 4 and a half inches. So now there'll be enough room to put in the 2x6 there and to place the 2x6 we will be placing annotative objects, so not actual solid geometry. So if I go to the Annotate tab, and then choose a detail component here, then among several other things, I should have some dimensional lumber and two by six. So then I'll be able to bring it in, tap the space bar to rotate it, and click to place it accordingly. I'll also place it to show where there's the cross section of the bottom plate of the wall and then also the top plate. And typically you have a double top plate so I can put two up there as well. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so what I want to do then is I want to bring down a portion of the wall, not the entire wall, not the 2x6 structure or the inside stuff, but just the outside features, I want to bring those down and have them cover up the floor structure. So I'll have it come down maybe um, negative one foot four. So the way that we're going to tackle that is if I select this wall, what I want is this value right here, base extension distance. I want to set this to negative one foot four. But as you can see right now it's grayed out. So I'm going to have to go in and edit the structure of this wall. So we'll click on edit type which brings up this dialog box. And then I'll click the preview button so I can see what the left side looks like. And I will change the drop down to the section view to see the wall from the side. I'm gonna click inside this window and zoom in towards the bottom of the wall. And then I'm going to click on edit structure. In the edit structure window, I'm going to click the modify button then I'm going to come in and unlock the layers that I wish to be able to drag down. So that's going to be this plywood layer here. So I'll select it and click the unlock padlock. And then the siding layer. I'll click the bottom edge and unlock it. Then I'll go ahead and click OK. And OK again. I'm not going to see any change out here, but you will see a little drop down arrow where I can actually click and drag this down now. And you'll also see over here in the properties, the base extension distance is now available to me. So I can now put in negative one foot four to bring the siding down to cover up the subfloor. So if I switch back to 3D and take a look at that outside wall, you can see this wall has been taken care of. So in addition to doing it to the section view, you'll also want to go ahead and select the rest of the walls around the house and give them a base extension of negative one foot four to cover up the floor structure the rest of the way around the house. And this has been a look at the section tools in Autodesk Revit.